put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Dark Ages 1991 video game review. The Great Kingdom has fallen under the titular Dark Ages because the evil wizard Garth, you know, with a name like that I might turn evil too, has enslaved the kingdom, taking over the throne. He has cast you out, you the prince of the kingdom. He did this when you were an infant and you are now, you know, a grown man, so you're old enough to actually fight back. Now what he didn't know was that the person that took care of you in all those years was the former hero of the land. See me, I'd have checked for that. And I guess he was no longer famous since no one noticed that. But anyway, you have, you know, strength and agility and magic. So you are to fight your way through this kingdom of vile and evil creatures and find Garth for a somewhat anticlimactic battle, although I guess it's better if you don't have the super-powered weapon. But anyway, this is just one of those games I love. It's basically a platform action game. And it's very simplistic. Basically, you can move side to side, you can jump, and you can fire your magic attack. And that's really it. You know, you can jump and, whilst in the air, fire your magic attack. And, you know, there are these wise men that, you know, if you go up to them and press your up key, you will either inquire them what you know item they will require to open the door to the next area, or you will hand in that item and they'll open the door, turn into a flying something, one of the enemies. You can't actually kill that particular one. And believe me, I've tried. Even when I was a kid, I always wanted to kill those former wise men. I don't know why. And, you know, entering the door also, you know, by the up key. But yeah, very, very simple. Now, the game, the length is kind of difficult to say. Basically, it really depends on how good you are at this sort of thing. It is an extremely difficult game at times. You know, there are levels that you literally almost cannot get through without at least some luck in addition to just insane reflexes, hand-to-eye coordination, and, you know, just memorizing when the enemies come at you and such. Now, one excellent point about the game, you know, part of what makes it you know, not frustrating, because it's a very thin line between when it's just frustrating to the point where you don't want to play anymore and, you know, actually challenging. You know, I find myself having to go back to these old games to find some challenge nowadays in video games. This one walks that balance extremely well. You cannot save in a level, but the moment you're in a, you know, you, you can save at any time, essentially, but it will mean saving the last, you know, the 
most recent level you've gotten to, the, the start of that level is where you're actually saving. So, you know, literally, and, and you can, you know, leave the game at within a f few seconds also. But yes, basically when you press escape or when you die, you know, you'll be asked, do you want to save and do you want to restore? And, you know, basically, because you might not want to save. That's the excellent thing. This game does not force you to save. That's part of the excellent thing. You know, because if you got to the new level, but you've got, like, one, you know, little circle of health, you might not want to save. You might just want to say, okay, now I know how to get to this level. Let me see if I can do it without losing so much health, because that's a lo lo large part of it. And that, you know, do note, once you've saved, you can't unsave. You can't, you know, say, oh, wait, I changed my mind, I want to go back a level. No. If you've saved and you change your mind, you're going to have to start the game over. Although, it is divided into three chapters, and, you know, so you won't be starting at the very beginning of the adventure itself, necessarily. You might, you'll just be starting at the, you know, at the start of that particular chapter. But yes, and, you know, the restore also allows you to, you know, basically, if you just want to make sure that you've saved where you got to, you know, the moment you get into the new level, you can just press escape and say yes to saving and then yes to restoring, you know. And if you don't want to play, obviously, you don't restore. Anyway, the game has a lot of different, you know, or a nice amount of different areas. You have these caves that are very, you know, brown and sort of gloomy. You have these, I don't know, dungeons, I guess, which are very gray and very bleak looking. You know, more, that, that's why I say the, the, the caves aren't quite, you know, the, the caves aren't bleak, but the prisons are. And you have these very bright kind of, I, I guess, forests. You know, with very alive grass. I guess what they're trying, what they were trying to do, is mimic like the way grass moves in the wind. But basically, it's just standing there, going back and forth. It it doesn't quite look like grass moving in the wind. But they tried. This is a game that you know, going by its age, it is of course you know the graphics are of that age. You know, I'd, I'd compare it maybe to one of the first couple of Commander Keen games. You know, although. Those games really do not have a modicum of the atmosphere that this game does. But yes, you know, that basically 256 colors, you know, for those of you who remember those days. And, you know, and also for some reason, your hero, you know, who doesn't have a name, I'm pretty sure, the prince, who I don't think comes from Persia, Although the kingdom is unnamed, so you never know. His knee is bleeding. Or at least, you know, it looks like there's blood at, at his knee. There's, there's red there. I don't know what they were going for with that if it wasn't that his knee is bleeding. Now, the... Part of the... You know, something that's quite good about these different kind of... A couple of environments is that it actually does do a nice job of switching some back and forth. So, I would personally say that, you know, you never spend too long in one area. And it also has this kind of otherworldly feeling to it, because very suddenly you'll be in a completely different type of area sometimes. You know, you'll go from a forest directly into the prison, and you're like, how did that happen? Why, why is, you know... A bunch of the level changes are very abrupt, sort of, you know, or not not like in time, but in that, you know, you're just changing from one area to another, you're going from one area to another, and the moment you get to the new area, there, you know, there is no real, like, you don't have, like, cutscenes showing you, well, now you're here because of this or that. You're just suddenly in a completely different area, potentially. You know, I guess you could choose to look at that as negative, but I just... I love it, personally. Now... Yes, the enemies are... There are a number of different types. I'd say maybe at least... 
at least a half a dozen different types of enemies. Maybe a total of ten different enemies. Again, old game, kind of simple. They, you know, they worked with what they had to work with, and they did a great job based on that. You have these... I don't know, I guess they're supposed to be like men, but they're really skinny compared to the prince, and like their head moves... I don't know, it's difficult to describe actually, but they just, they look really strange. They might be like robotic, excuse me, men, sort of, and they, you know, they especially look like men when they move back and forth. But the strange thing is, sometimes if they don't, you know, if they're not looking to move, or if they can't move, they'll just be like crouched down with their head moving. You know, it actually, yeah, it has that sort of metronome kind of movement to it, the, the head. And yeah, that, I, I should probably say this is a very creepy game. And a large part of that is the enemies, especially the designs, well, their, their behavior also. But, yeah, it's just freaky. I have, I have no idea what to make of them, you know, and that's really the case with a lot of the enemies. The, the bird-like one that, you know, the former wise men turn into is actually, it's like red and pink, and with these just delicate sort of see-through wings. It actually, it's like when you see a magnified, you know, fly, a house fly, that kind of, you know, color and, and sort of texture, if that makes sense, of, of wings, and just, yeah, and, and the wings are like bigger than they are, you know, much bigger than they are, and sort of round, just really creepy design. Then you have these, see these especially, I have no idea what are. There are these round things, maybe they're just animated rock. And I say animated because they follow you. A lot of the enemies in this game follow you. The, the mechanical men, they follow you. You know, if you're like standing up above them. Say you, you have to get to here and you're standing here, there's, you know, lower ground here. Or maybe they're even on the level as you they will walk towards you, and if you jump across them and go over here, they will walk back towards you, you know. And if they're on lower ground than you are, you're standing up here, they're standing down here, they will do the crouch down, you know, and they'll just stay there, you know, decidedly. Not like, wait a while, no, they just stay there. Really creepy. But, yeah, just this round gray thing which rolls at you, and... Yeah, it follows you. Now, the the really lucky thing about it, because it is just a, you know, horrifying thing to be chased by. The good thing is that if you can lure it down to a lower level, it can't get back up, you know. Actually, I suppose that's kind of true of most of the enemies, that they won't get back up. But although the, the mechanical men will never leave the level they're on, you know, the rolly thing... It'll just, it's, it's like it's just chasing you, you know. Now, then there are these really creepy spiders. That's, that's actually, that is the closest thing to an enemy which you can actually really compare to something that, and it, like, makes sense. But yeah, these are basically spiders. Half their legs are green, half their legs are yellow, and they have these really, ugh, eyes. Very... You know, it's not like a regular spider where it's basically, you know, just even have, you can barely even tell if it has eyes a lot of the time. These definitely have eyes, very, you know, distinct eyes. And part of the really creepy thing about these spiders is that they will actually sometimes appear upside down on, like, the ceiling. You know, and they'll just be crawling back and forth. And just it's, it's just really creepy to see. Now, the spiders and the flying bird things that I mentioned, the insectoid birds, let's call them that, both of those have this movement pattern where if... Basically, every enemy in the game can only move when you are looking at it. You know, further creepy. 
So, and, and yes, both spiders and the insectoid birds will move back and forth across a set pattern. Neither will really follow you, nor will they run away from you, but it might at first look like they are, you know, but really, you know, if you, if you're behind one of them, you'll just be sort of chasing it until it reaches its, you know, th this point where it will turn back around. Sometimes you can't actually chase it to that point, which can kind of suck because you might want to get a high score, you know, and yeah, killing enemies is one of the ways to get points, but this is also dangerous because the birds fly fast. So you might not be able to shoot it in time and it'll hurt you. This is one of those games where touching an enemy means it hurts you, you know, basically. There are also insta-kill spots, like if you fall, you know, if there if there's a hole in the ground and you fall into it, you will die. You know, there's no such thing as falling down and then just, yeah. And at the same time, you do not lose any health from just falling down unless you land in you know, one of the dangerous spots, such as the lava, or the green slime, whatever that is. Yeah. Yeah, there are, there are dangers as well as enemies, you know. There's also, you know, do not touch the, what's it called, spider, spider's webs. Now, yes, and then there's this enemy which is, I guess, like a dragon. I don't know if it's supposed to be spewing fire, but it really doesn't look like fire. It it just it might just be like an energy attack, or maybe they just didn't you know couldn't do fire well. I don't know. But anyway, what the the trick to that one is? It's invisible until you get close enough. You know, it's like it's like hidden, and then suddenly it's just there. And by the time you see it, you're close enough that it could hurt you, and you'll want to run back. It can't move. But it has this pattern, and it never deviates from this. If if you're if you've been close enough that it you know that to unveil it, then you know it will pretty much just be standing doing this pattern over and over. Sometimes if you get far enough away from it, it will stop and then you know turn invisible again. But basically, for a little while it attacks and it is vulnerable. Then it you know, raises the shield that is just impossible to basically... Actually, I guess it isn't really a shield. I, it might be like a cloak or something because your bullet, your, your ammo, you know, the magic, I will get to it, your magic will pass right through it. So, you know, you just have to... Yeah, there, there's no way to hurt it unless it can also hurt you. You know, very devious. Yeah, I think that's about it for the enemies. This has some great music as well. You know, very kind of tense and fast. Always meaty or however you pronounce that. You know, again, simple music, but it is really good music. I'd actually, I wouldn't mind hearing it, you know, like done without the meaty, you know. But yeah, it, it really keeps you going. And the sound effects as well are very, you know, they really uh, help. It, again, it's a very atmospheric game. Now, the... Yes, I, I should talk about the magic. Basically, you start with this... It, it looks like a kind of a half circle, basically. Blue half circles is what you're shooting at the beginning of the game. You have unlimited ammo, but there is this limit to how many projectiles of yours can be on screen at any given time. And you start out with only one. There, It's these green little things with a white cross on them. Every time you pick one up, it will be added. Uh, on the right side of the screen, uh, with the, the HUD and everything, you have this indicator of this is your current magic, and this is, you know, the actual, like, projectile limit, you know, currently. And, yeah, you can pick up 
several over the course of the adventure, you know. Do note, every time you complete a chapter, you start all over and with, you know, only one projectile and only that blue half circle as, you know, your ammo. So, yeah, that is a little annoying, but in every single one of them, you can upgrade your weapons. In fact, all the way. Now, yes, you can upgrade how many projectiles you can have on screen, and you can upgrade what your ammo actually is, you know, what your projectiles are. Now, when you, you know, basically there are three possibilities, and do note that you, if you pick up a fourth or, or a third upgrade, you know, the first time you pick up an upgrade, you'll get to the second weapon. Third time, second, second time you pick up an upgrade, third weapon. Pick up another upgrade, you will go back to the first weapon. You know, I'm not sure, it's been a while, it, this hasn't happened to me since I was a kid, but it can happen. I distinctly remember hating accidentally put, picking up, the, you know, an upgrade. But I don't remember if the projectile count also resets. But anyway, basically the second one, and see the, the great thing here is that each of these are good for different things. See, the first one is just a regular projectile. You just shoot it and it goes in a straight line in whatever direction you shot it. And that's, you know, that's obviously good if you just need to, yeah, be, you know, gunning down things just like that. The second one is a boomerang. Now, the boomerang will allow you to hit a slightly wider area. Basically, you know, it goes, again, in a straight line, and when it reaches the end of the screen, it will go up just like, you know, a little bit, and then move back to you. Now, if there's an enemy that you, you know, let's say you're standing still, and there's an enemy, you know, one just just that little bit above you that, you know, it might, it, it's not actually attacking you, but it's up there, so you can't shoot it just by shooting straight. If you fire a couple of the boomerangs, then when they return, they will hit it. However, once you've fired the maximum amount of boomerangs, you know, again, the projectile count, those boomerangs have to return to you before you can shoot anymore. So, you might actually lose a target, you might actually get hit. You know, I will get into the health system because that's a pretty critical aspect of this game. Now, so so yeah, you know, you want to make up your mind on that. And now the third one is what I called the superpowered weapon earlier. I guess it's a ray gun. I don't know what else to call it. It's it's this purple attack. It makes you feel real badass when you got it. It's like, it, you're the freaking Terminator all of a sudden. And it, don't get me wrong, you gotta earn this thing. You gotta seriously work to actually get this upgrade. In, you know, it was especially harrowing in that third chapter. But yeah, you gotta seriously earn this thing. And you only do get it near the end of a chapter, you know, so it actually... You know, it really tells you the end is not. You're you're getting to the end, and these do get extremely difficult towards the end, especially in the third one. And they also do get progressively harder even very early on, like in the second and third chapters. You know, once you've completed the first chapter, it doesn't really stop being that hard. It just lets up just enough to accommodate for you having you know, been demoted as far as your magic and your, yeah, as as far as that goes. Now, yeah, it's just this stream of energy. That's the awesome thing, actually. It, it has a projectile count. I love that they actually did this, because it's absurdly big. Like, before, you might, you know, maybe you've picked up three extra of the green crossy things, so, yeah, awesome, you know, you now have four projectiles, and you can see that in the count, you know, you can see those four, uh, you know, yeah, and when you pick up the ray gun thing, it just has this, I don't know, I've never counted, but maybe 40, 
of the projectile cam. So yeah, basically you can just be firing and just firing. You know, you never have to actually you know slow down and shooting it, unlike the other two weapons. So yeah, when you got that, you can just tear through enemies as long as you can still hit them. You know, and here's the kicker. It has much worse range than the other two, you know. It's still got decent range. You can cover maybe, I don't know, a of as far as the length of the screen goes, maybe a third. So it's not horrible, but the other two, they their range is literally in the entire screen. If you know, if you like, if if there's nothing stopping your projectile, it will pass from you on one side of the screen to the other side of the screen all the way you know for I think for both the half circle and the boomerang so yeah you know again decisions decisions you know you gotta really think about it but for my money it really is very cool to have the ray gun but anyway yeah, I think that pretty much covers all but the health system. The health system is a large part. Oh, I, one thing I do got to say about the, I guess it's not technically an enemy. It's, it's an obstacle or, a, you know, a, a danger. Among the obstacles and dangers, by the way, are also these... I have no idea what they are. These red things that look slightly dangerous, they look like something that belongs to an animal that would use it as sort of a de deterrent, like you know how some animals are really dangerous. You know, like like a scorpion with its stinger or something, you know, it, it or a tail, whatever. You know, it looks really dangerous and yeah, if you touch it, you get hurt. And there are these you know, this is especially true of the caves. There are these, you know, sharp, they're brown, so I don't know exactly. I guess it's like stalactites or stalagmites of the cave. I, I always mess up which is which. You know, the ones pointing downwards. Now, yes, the, the thing that I had to mention, the sometimes up from the ground, there will come, excuse me, this skeletal hand. And it's not just a hand, because it is not human. In its grip, it can literally hold the prince around the waist. That gives you an idea of how huge this hand is. It never does anything but reach up from the ground and grab and then go back into the ground so you know the, it's not like it's a sign that oh crap something's gonna you know dig its way through the ground and you know that would be awesome though but it's not if you are standing directly where it is it grips a hold of you and you lose you know like one of health. You, you always lose one of health unless you die, you know. You never lose more than one of health. And you, when you get hit, you know, you will be invulnerable for a few seconds. And you won't actually be stunned. You know, there is no stunning in this. See Hercules video games? This is how you do it. You know, so you get a little bit of a chance to escape from the danger in the meantime, you know. But yeah, you... Basically, the great thing about this is, even if it's not up of the ground, even if you're, you know, like walking across, I don't remember, there, there might be like some trick to it, but they just, they, they are racking my nerves, so I just do not, you know, I haven't recently quite had the, the goal to try out different ways of approaching it but basically if you're standing over where it comes up at the wrong time and this isn't just when the hand is up I'm pretty sure if you just walk across it you know when the hand is all the way down it still grips you know and it's just suddenly there you know most of the time it's like 
gradually moving up, gradually moving down. When you walk across it, it just immediately grips you, you know, just really creepy. And it will hurt you the moment you're gripped, and if you don't move out of the grip, then once the one or two second invulnerability wears off, it'll hurt you again, you know. But it's not difficult to get back out of the grip, you just have to actually move. I think you might have to jump in order to get out of the grip, but yeah, no big deal, you know. It's not that you have to struggle against it. Now, the health system, basically, there is no way to get a, like, prolonged kind of health. You know, you, you can't get sort of a greater amount of health than you start out with. At the beginning of the game, I don't, I haven't actually counted, but I guess it's like 10 units of health, 10 of these circles of health. If you lose all of them, obviously you die. If you collect 10 coins, you will get one more unit of health. So, and and there are not that many coins in the game. You know, there's, there's enough that you can regain some health, but do not rely on, you know, basically if you get health, if you get hurt several times in the level, you've probably completely, you know, botched it. If there isn't a heart nearby, a full heart, which will restore your health all the way. And these get increasingly difficult to, for one thing, get, and for another thing, get back away with. You know, you might die as you get, you know, as you move away from it, or you might lose more health, you know, so, you know, after you've gotten it, so you still don't have full health. And you'll want full health. You'll need full health. You know, a lot of these, you know, places, there, there are several areas where I found no other solution than to just rush through it, taking as little damage as I possibly could, and then get to the heart that I had already scouted ahead for. You know, basically, yeah. Now, Part of the something that's really good about the collecting 10 coins option is that once you have nine, if you have full health, it'll just stay at nine, you know, it won't start the count over. And you'll still want to collect the coins even if it's not giving you health because, again, points, you know. And that brings me nicely to the replayability. There is only one difficulty setting. So the replayability is essentially the high score table. You know, there's nothing else to really replay this for. You know, if you enjoy it, if you want to see if you can complete a level with, you know, without losing as much health maybe, but that is really it. You know, there's nothing that to really, you know, get you to come back particularly. I do think that it does a great job of very gradually sort of at first just introducing the enemies you fight. You know, the first couple of levels, it's just very few enemies and very few enemy types. And, you know, over the first, I don't know, handful of levels in the first chapter, you're introduced to all the different enemy types. And I feel like I should mention the last enemy now that I just remembered it. There is this, again, I don't know, fish, maybe? Like a, a fish, it, actually it might be a bird. It's a fish or a bird, it's turquoise, and if you Basically, it's a suicide unit, I guess, or maybe you cause it to commit suicide in order to... There's no way to kill it other than to make it commit suicide. It will jump in this very... You know, it, it has this angle that it'll try to rush at you in, and it sort of jumps towards you. And But yeah, it has to do the diagonal attack. I don't know, I guess it's... It's a pawn, you know, in chess. Anyway, it has to do that diagonal attack, and as soon as you see it starting to do that diagonal attack, you just have to run in the other direction so it doesn't hit you, and it hits the ground and it dies. You know, yeah. Now, 
Yes, the it you know it spends the first couple of levels just sort of introducing the different enemies. So you know the first time you play it, you know <laughs> I guess I've just you know spoiled most of the enemies for you. But yeah, you're just running around like. Oh, good thing I ran away from that. And what the crap is that? You know, just suddenly something new that you have to fight and figure out the weaknesses of and figure out how to move around. See, yeah, I really like that. You know, they, they spend some time building up these enemies and sort of allowing you to face them one by one, more or less. You know, and you get to, you know, you realize how they, how they work, you know. And... Then it starts just ra raising the bar of how many there are, how many different types are in a single level, how many of the you know dangers and the like are in a level, and just over the course of all three chapters, you do get to a point where it's just insane the amount of enemies that you're up against, you know, the, and the amount of stuff you have to dodge, and just, yeah, all these different things that, yeah. Also, for some reason, water is dangerous in the game. You know, if you come across a fountain that sprays water directly up you know, it'll, it'll go like really high and then go back lower. Jump over it when it's low, because if you get hit by the water, you're hurt for some reason. I don't know. I guess the prince is, you know, one of those aliens from the others or something. Yeah, I suppose that pretty well covers it. The storytelling is entirely done in text. You know, there is no, there is no voice acting. There is no, nothing. You know, it's not a spoiler to say that the game ends with you fighting Garth because the story actually really tells you. You know, you have to find Garth and kill him. At first, I did not know that that was him I was looking at. You know, but yeah. Anyway. The, but, but yeah, it actually, it, it, yeah, the storytelling is entirely in text and there's really almost nothing to tell of the story, really. It, you know, each of these chapters allow you to read the story, but it doesn't change over time, you know, it's, it's, the same backstory for all three, the one I gave at the beginning of this video. And then at the end of each chapter, you're also told, you know, in the first two, you're told, ooh, it's gonna get even tougher, are you sure you can do it? And please order now. And then, you know, the final one, it tells you, you know, the, yeah. Not a spoiler, basic, you know, fairy tale, happy ending kind of thing. I also quite like how isolated the game is. You know, I, I realize that it's not the only from this period where you're the only one, but literally, you know, other than you, there's only the wise men. And they're all actually also kind of creepy because they will look straight at you, kind of. You know, when, when you're at the left of them, they're looking at you. When you're to the right, you know, try it sometime. Try walking back and forth, you know, between the two sides of them. No matter what, they're looking towards you, you know, that's kind of creepy. And they turn into that flying insectoid thing, you know, the moment you actually give them the, you know, magic item. So, yeah. Now, which can be, you know, anything from a key to a giant tomato and a mask, yeah. But you always only have to get one. And sometimes you'll get the magic item before you meet the wise man, sometimes the other way around. But yeah, you know, it really is this kind of you are entirely on your own. You never you never hear of any other people, you never you know, actually meet anyone or hear of any kind of you know there there's no princess in this. It's just it's you and Garth. You know. And 
yeah. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.